for this building. And um, now this is a lot that is on agricultural uh, A12. Now the special provisions um, for A12 were put in place to allow for the severance of this lot from the surrounding farmland when that severance took place, um, which was um, back in 2006, I believe. Yeah, it was, yeah, back, I think, in 2006. Uh, so uh, the special provisions allowed for the reduced um, frontage and lot size, as well as the reduced setbacks for this shed, which was existing at that time. Uh, but it didn't recognize um, or allow for any kind of future development with reduced setbacks. And, and so they are uh, requesting for uh, the reduction in the si uh, rear yard and the side yard setback for this building. And so uh, to be located where it is because it wouldn't uh, meet the bylaw currently. So just a little bit of detail. Um, the site, uh, subject property is approximately 0 0.86 hectares in size. And as such, it's too large to be considered um, under section 5.4.5 for undersized lots, which is limited to lots of less than 0 0.8 hectares in size. And the um, bylaw is quite clear on, on rounding up and down. And so it can't be round it down to 0 0.8, it has to be um, considered greater than, than 0 0.8. Uh, the zoning requires a 20 meter setback for all buildings from, uh, for all buildings from all lot lines in the agricultural zoning. And so the applicants have requested to reduce the setback in order to position the proposed shed to the back corner of the lot, which is a largely vacant area. Uh, to meet the setback, um, so if they were to meet the 20 meter setback for each lot line, it would be located kind of here, and it would require um, that the water line between the well and the house be, be moved, which um, they uh, understandably aren't, uh, would prefer to avoid. And so they've requested a reduced setback of three meters or 10 feet from each of those two lot lines. So just um, a brief overview in terms of the policies. Um, there's no real uh, issues of provincial interests at play uh, in this property. Uh, the subject lands are designated as agricultural in the Bruce County official plan, um, and so the existing residential use is permitted, and the subject property was severed in 2006. Uh, the proposed accessory building poses no compliance issues with the official plan. In terms of the zoning, as mentioned, the special provisions in the zoning allowed for the lot to be severed back in 2006, but do not um, allow for any future structure, or do not address any future structures on the property. Um, uh, it should be noted that, you know, in terms of the underside lot provisions in for the agricultural area, um, there are allowed reduced setbacks, but as mentioned, this, this particular property doesn't qualify as an undersized lot. Um, but on an undersized lot, uh, this type of structure would be permitted to be located within 1.5 meters of the lot line. Um, so the proposed setback of three meters from each lot line, I, I believe generally meets the intent of the zoning bylaw. In terms of um, interdepartmental and agency consultation, um, there are no objections raised. Um, the conservation authority uh, did not recommend the pre preparation of an EIS and found the uh, variance to be acceptable. And as yeah, no, none of the other agencies raised any issues. There were uh, no public comments received in regards to this application. So in terms of the four tests, I've gone over the first two in terms of the intent and purpose of the official plan and the, and the zoning bylaw. In terms of test three, is the requested variance desirable and appropriate? Uh, I believe that it is. Uh, it would allow the structure to be located in an appropriate area of the property and would prevent the existing water line from needing to be relocated. Uh, the three meter setback provides ample room around the proposed building for access and maintenance, uh, and the variance represents an, an appropriate form of development uh, for the use of, of this property. Uh, and then for the fourth test, is the variance considered minor? I believe that it is. Uh, this structure should not uh, impact any of the neighboring properties or um, any sort of municipal uses or the environment, so it can be considered minor. So with that, um, I do recommend that this uh, application be approved and that the decision sheet be signed. Thanks. Thank you.
Does the applicant wish to address the committee? I don't know if there's any public comment on this case. If not, we'll move to the committee. Vice Deputy Mayor Huber. Is the applicant here? I'm just curious, um, the drawing doesn't include um, any indication of access to the pole shed. It, it, I'm assuming it's via the existing driveway from the east. There's no in intention to create another driveway out to concession two, is there? No, no, no. Thank you. Mr. Minaj. Mr. Chair, um, how to uh, address my questions, I guess, to Tessa, if I could. Um, I don't see a height on this building. You tell me how high it is? I, I don't know for sure, but it would meet the bylaw. Are the owners of the property the same owners of the surrounding agricultural land? No, they are not. So the reason I ask about the height and the ownership is the, um, the south sun, if this is uh, 40 feet high, will shade the agricultural land so the so the, the crops won't grow. So it, to me, it, it, it's, uh, it, it, it has merit to know how high it is and to know what that shade angle is. It's, I believe it's just a one-story shed, but I, I don't know uh, for 100% sure on that. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Mayev. There we go. Sorry. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Tessa, I'm just wondering, I'll be supporting this application. I'm just wondering, could you remind me uh, of the 20-meter setback in an agricultural area, the purpose of the 20-meter setback? Again, I, I heard it one time, but I need to be refreshed. Um, I believe it's, there's, I'm not sure exactly all of the implications of it, but I think it has to do with, you know, making sure that farm buildings are, you know, separated you know, a fair distance from each other. I mean, if you have an agricultural operation, two adjacent agricultural operations, at least you'll, you'll have a minimum of 40 meters separating them in terms of buildings in a typical typical situation. Um, with a surplus farm dwelling severance, it kind of, it changes the equation a little bit and that, that distance isn't necessary, but it can help in terms of making sure you're at least part of the way towards meeting your minimum distance requirements and, and having enough space on the property and I think it also helps cluster buildings kind of towards the center of the lot in terms of farm uh, farm dwellings as opposed to have them spread out in various areas okay. of the lot. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This seems to be good use of property, so I'll be supporting. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? No further comment? Then I have a motion moved by uh, Mr. Legault and seconded by Mr. Gibbons, uh, dated today, August the 20th, 2018, that Minor variance application A 38 18 decimal 44 be approved, subject to the conditions on the decision sheet. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Our next item is uh, item number 5.2. This is a minor variance application A 44 18 decimal 44, Lord Algon Estates Developments Limited, with municipal address of 1045 Waterloo Street. Uh, Ms. Fortier. Sorry, this is actually my, oh, I'm my sorry. file. That's okay. Um, okay, so the, uh, the variance is for. The number of uh, dwelling units permitted, permitted on subject lands, which uh, are fronting Waterloo uh, Street, close to the intersection of Waterloo and Devonshire. Um, there's an existing uh, apartment complex there, obviously not evident in the air photo um, on the screen, um, but uh, I'm sure you're, you're all well familiar, aware of the, um, the newly constructed apartment building. So the Proponent is requesting to construct two additional buildings um, of very similar nature to the existing structure there, just to give you a, a sense of um, uh, what the uh, site context is. 
Uh, so in terms of surrounding uses, it's, it's a mix of residential, highway commercial, institutional. There's a, a senior's home. There's a nearby school as well. Uh, it's on municipal water and sewer. And again, access is by uh, Waterloo Street. Um, so this is the site plan here. Um, so as I mentioned, this building is existing currently. Uh, in the grayed out area and the proponent is intending to build uh, two additional buildings um, on building two and building three uh, in subsequent phases and um, I believe building two is my numbers right here um, Fifty-four. Yeah, thank you. Um, sorry, both are fifty-four. So um, for a total of one hundred and eight, the subject lands are um, permitted to build one hundred and one uh, units, as per the um, the density uh, provisions of the zoning bylaw. So they're seeking relief from the density provisions uh, to ninety-three units per hectare in order to build one hundred and eight units. Uh, those seven additional units would be part of building three, I believe. So building uh, two and building three would be identical. If, I don't believe there's any um, additional requirements uh, that um, would be impacted in terms of parking um, from for those uh, additional three, but Jay, Jay may be able to confirm that. Uh, I do believe there's some additional site plan modifications required as a result of this, obviously through a, a separate process than the variance before us. Um, so in terms of uh, PPS or provincial interest, there's um, not really uh, provincial interest. It's, it's fairly uh, in line or consistent with the PPS, which... Um, promotes uh, mixed use and, and high density um, uses such as these. Uh, likewise with the uh, Bruce County official plan, it's primary urban community, uh, similar provisions to the PPS, um, high density uh, is encouraged. Um, residential in the Soggy and Shores official plan and um, zoning is currently R4. So that's the uh, provisions we'll be uh, seeking a variance uh, from is the R4. Um, zone provisions. Um, so specifically within the R, um, the R4 zone, um, section 10.AI uh, states that uh, minimum lot area for an apartment dwelling is 230 meters per unit for the first four um, plus 100 square meters for each additional unit thereafter up to a maximum density of 90 units per gross hectare. And section 10.3ii um, states that uh, the maximum number of dwellings per lot for an apartment building is subject to the minimum lot areas of 10.ai. So they're kind of, uh, uh, those two provisions are linked to one another. So to, um, to, to, um, Vary the one variance requires uh, a variance on, on both provisions just uh, noted. So again, the request is to go from 90 units per gross hectare to uh, 93. Um, I, I should mention also in the Sogging Shores official plan, um, there's three high density blocks, uh, blocks 57, 58 and 59 that were draft approved for a total of 357 apartment units. Um, and in approving the seven additional units to block um, 59, this is block 59 we're speaking of, um, looking at the, the aggregate or all three blocks, high density blocks together, um, the proponent is in essence, borrowing or shifting seven units from block 57 and 58, which are undeveloped, um, to to build within block 59. Um, so that negates the need for an official plan amendment. Um, however, if they were to, uh, they'll now have to build at a lower density on block 57 and 58. 
um, unless they go through an official plan amendment for uh, those two blocks at a later date if they choose. And so to confirm, uh, the town had no objections. The site plan will need to be revised uh, to facilitate the, uh, the increased density. The SVCA did not recommend um, the EIS, and the variance was uh, accept acceptable to them. Um, no issues were raised by other agencies, and uh, no public comments uh, were received for this one. Um, so in terms of the... The four tests, I believe we went over the official plan and the zoning bylaw um, in terms of test three. Is the proposed variance desirable for the uh, for appropriate development or use of the land, building, or structure? Uh, I believe the proposed variance is appropriate for the lands. The subject lands have already undergone a comprehensive planning process through the official plan amendment, zoning bylaw amendment, and plan of subdivision um, approvals. Um, the proposed variance maintains the intent of the planning exercise that established those lands as a high density use. Um, it also maintains the function of the, the lands, um, which was established through site plan control and will be subject to site plan control. In terms of test four, is the proposed variance minor in nature? Um, the variance, in my opinion, is minor in nature relative to the, relative to the existing permitted use on the lands, which it, which would allow um, 101 apartment units. Uh, the proposed variance will permit seven additional units on the land for a total of 108 um, without changing the overall form of the proposed buildings. Um, the proposed density on the lands would increase from 88.5 units per hectare to 93, an increase of approximately 5%. So just to recap, uh, the variance is to uh, facilitate increased density from uh, the permitted or the existing 88.5 units per hectare um, to 93 units per hectare. 90 units per hectare is permitted. Um, the application is consistent with the provincial policy statement, upholds the objectives of the uh, Bruce County official plan, and in my opinion represents good land use planning. So, uh, with that, the recommendation is for approval. Thank you, Mr. Kingsbury. Is the applicant in attendance? Do you wish to address? I'd like to come up to the microphone, please. Good evening, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. My name is Kate Wills and I'm with MHBC Planning. I am a planner who's been hired uh, by Lord Elgin Estates to present uh, the application to you this evening. Um, I'd like to thank you for giving your presentation. All the details have really been covered. I uh, wanted to let you know that we have reviewed the staff report and we are um, sharing the same opinion uh, as the planners. Um, just to give a little bit more background on the, on the site, um, as you're aware, there's already a, a building already constructed on site uh, on Block 59, and um, the reason for this change is because the applicant had noted that the market demand was for units of a larger size, and to meet this demand, the applicant is proposing just slightly larger units, which is what uh, people are looking for uh, than the original building, and um, on the severed parcel would add seven more units and also add an amenity building on the outside as well. And the seven additional units would uh, make the project more feasible. Um, generally, the site plan will remain the same, and we do understand that we will need an amendment to the site plan approved site plan. Um, and we're willing to do that without any issues. Um, it is just going to be for a slightly larger building, but uh, keeps the same intent of the original, so it will be consistent along the site. So I'm here to answer any questions. Um, I do agree that it does meet the four tests uh, for minor variants as well. Thank you. Thanks. Councillor Maya. I'll get it figured out. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for your presentation, and, uh, and uh, thank you for the investment in Saugeen Shores, too. Uh, it's uh, obviously this type of housing is, you know, dwelling. 
is, 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 is required in our community and judging by how quickly the first uh, 50 or 60 units filled up, there's, you've done your market research obviously and there's, there's demand for additional units. So I'm just wondering, um, that first unit did fill quickly and I just wonder the uh, square footage, you said that, the, the, you know, your uh, renters are re requesting slightly larger units. Do you know offhand the, uh, what, the, what the size of the existing units may be and what you're proposing to go to? And my other second question is, if this is approved this evening, I'll certainly be supporting it. Um, what the start date might look like? Through you, Mr. Chair, I'm just reviewing the site plan here to see if I can answer your question. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear that I have this information on the site plan, but it is larger than what is actually permitted in the zoning bylaw. Um, but they did recognize that uh, when people were looking at units in, in the initial building that they did want larger larger units and, and at this time I'm told that the developer is gearing it towards uh, seniors and others um, who may be working in the area such as places like the Bruce Power Plant. Is there a projected, if approved, a projected start date? What are you, what are you thinking? Well, my understanding, oh, through you Mr. Chair, my understanding is that um, We'll have to go through an amendment to the site plan, and then I believe they would start uh, immediately on phase two construction. That's my understanding. Vice Deputy Mayor Huber. Um, thank you. Um, I have a, a comment and then a, a request um, through the, the planner back to, to Lord Elgin Estates. Um, when all of these apartment buildings first came here, I believe they were all associated with Reeds, and, and Lord Elgin Estates has come into um, the equation after the first building was built. Is that fairly accurate? Yes, Lord Elgin Estates is a division of Reed's Heritage okay. Homes. Um, so what, what happened when they were first here was we were um, encouraged to think that with this volume of, of um, high-density buildings that there would be um, opportunities for affordable housing um, to, to creep into the mix here. And, um, you know, I think there was an excitement about that, and now it looks like, um, you know, these two buildings don't have much um, opportunity for that. So I, I just want to encourage you to think, you know, there's still a couple more to come, and, and that was part of the initial discussion about this. The reason why I bring that up is that we've done a, a fairly decent job of, of reminding ourselves often that we have in our official plan this goal of having 10% of all new growth be infilling or intensification and we keep hearing that and that's encouragement to, to create new lots in the built up part of town. Also in the official plan it says 30% of, of um, new growth should be medium or high density so this is a good example of how you know we're trying to uh, get that kind of um, housing opportunity in, in place. The other piece of the puzzle though is that we have a 30% target for affordable housing and, and we really haven't done very much to get closer to that goal, so um, certainly, you know, there is um, some hope that that um, apartment complexes might provide some of that kind of relief to the housing market here. So I'll just leave that thought with you because I know that there's a couple more to come. Um, but I, I think that um, these buildings, you know, the one that's there is um, looks good and and whatever, and and I think these two will match that. So I don't have a problem with the application, but um, just would hope that. And you know, we remember the third part of our official plan um, goal, which was to have 30% of, of new builds uh, reflect some affordable housing. Thank you. Professor Minaj. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I think this is marvelous and, and, uh, and a great step forward. And, and I only have a couple of, um, one maybe to the CAO, as seen as he's here, and that is to get this on the agenda as fast as we can, to get them going as fast as we can. So I think he understands that. But um, the site plan adjustment, I don't remember seeing the amenity building and the original site plan, so I would be 
happy to understand more about what its role is and, and how it will function and and if it's if it's a, a piece of the future and we should be looking for more of this type of structure and secondly um, I don't remember seeing this the original site plan suggest that the driveway exit or entrance for the, these two units would line up with Normanton Street I believe and uh, so it, we don't usually have stop signs on on private driveways entering onto uh, a busy Waterloo Street and directly opposite of Normanton Street, which is going to have um, a substantial number of single-family residences as well. So this could be a very busy little piece of, of property right there. So I wondered if there was any uh, secondary considerations as to how we might want to control the traffic differently or engineer our engineer and our planners are happy with the way it is thank you thank you very much is there anybody from the public who wishes to address what like to say that staff haven't provided formal comments on any site plan submission we haven't received one uh, but I'm making note of your comments Councillor Menage so we can, we can review them internally and comment back to Council a motion moved by Vice Deputy Mayor Huber and seconded by Mr. Legault dated today August the 20th 2018 that minor variance application a-44-18.44 be approved subject to the conditions on the decision sheet all in favor that is carried. Thank you. Our next item is uh, item number 5.3. This is the minor variance application A-39.18-18.48. I'll repeat that. A-39-18.48 for Mr. Brad Marslin. This is municipal address in Southampton of 87 South Rankin Street. Ms. Fortier. Thank you. Uh, so this application for, is for the extension of a legal non-conforming use on the property. Uh, so just to give a little bit of site context, this is the property here. So it's on the banks of the Sangeen River, just north of the bridge in Southampton. Um, and a little bit of a larger zoning context there. Um, and it is a residential use currently on the property. Um, and the surrounding use, uh, land uses are, are largely residential. And then there's the river. Uh, it is on full municipal services and has access from a year-round municipal road, South Rankin Street, um, through an, an, an easement over some um, over the road allowance as well, so the driveway cuts through the road allowance, but that is a, a long-standing access um, that's in place. Uh, so you can see that that up here. Uh, and on our mapping, this has come up as two lots, uh, but uh, it has been confirmed by a lawyer that these lots have merged, and this is this is a single property, so that that middle lot line uh, doesn't doesn't exist in. Uh, anymore so yeah, this is just a single lot so in terms of the proposal the proposal uh, the purpose of the application is to facilitate the construction of a new addition to the existing dwelling uh, the dwelling is located entirely in the EP7 zone which does not allow for further development um, and the dwelling is considered legal non-conforming so there's four structures currently on the property so there's a boathouse a garage a dwelling and a detached shed and the dwelling and the boathouse have been on the property since the 1950s and are considered legal non-conforming. The a detached garage and the detached shed um, were built in the mid-2000s and uh, were permitted through the EP7 zone. So there was a zoning bylaw amendment brought forward in order to allow those two structures. So they're, they're considered legal in the, in the EP7 zone uh, and then that dwelling and the um, and the boathouse are legal non-conforming since their use predates the zoning bylaw. And that's just a zoom in of, of the dwelling and what's being proposed. So there's the existing one-story cottage and a deck around it. And the proposed addition would 
um, bring out, kind of square off a little bit more the, the building as it exists and then add a second story uh, to, to that portion of the, of the cottage. Um, and, and then, yeah, there would be a second story addition as well to the cottage. So uh, just in terms of uh, the land use policies, The PPS, uh, the PPS is interested in the wise use and management of resources and the protection of natural heritage. Uh, natural heritage features identified on the property include significant woodlands, fish habitat, potentially significant wildlife habitat, and potentially the significant habitat of endangered species and threatened species. And the SPCA um, did carry out a review of the application in terms of natural heritage and have concluded that the proposal represents a negligible impact and so there are no outstanding natural heritage concerns on the property. The PPS is also interested in protecting public safety by ensuring development is directed away from areas of natural or human-made hazards where there is an unacceptable risk to public safety or property damage and directs not to create new or aggravate existing ha hazards. However, section 3.1.7 of the PPS states in part that development and site alteration may be permitted in those portions of hazardous lands and hazardous sites where the effects and risks to public safety are minor could be mitigated in accordance with provincial standards and where the following are demonstrated to be achieved. Uh, development and site alteration is carried out in accordance with flood proofing standards, protection work standards, and access standards. Vehicles and people have a safe way, uh, have a way of safely entering and exiting the area during times of flooding, erosion, and other emergencies. New hazards are not created and existing hazards are not aggravated and no adverse environmental impacts will result. So the SVCA are the experts in terms of natural hazards and have carried out a review of this application uh, in terms of those and have found that the four items listed above can be demonstrated and achieved through proper design. Uh, the SVCA has already actually issued their permit for the works on this property and so they're confident um, that all of these can be met and as such the planning de department is also confident that the proposal does not pose an increased risk to property or public safety. In terms of uh, the local official plan, the subject lands are designated environmental hazard and uh, in the Southern Shores official plan. Now, the general purpose of the EH, EH designation is to identify lands that are unsuitable for development or have the potential to be unsuitable for development due to natural hazards, including floodplains and erosion. As mentioned, the dwelling and boathouse on the property were constructed in the 1950s and are considered legal non-conforming. The existing development is subject to a certain degree of risk due to its proximity to the river. Um, however, the comments provided by the SVCA note that the proposal does not create a new hazard or aggravate the existing one. In terms of the zoning bylaw, the property is zoned Environmental Protection Special, EP7, and Environmental Protection. The proposed addition is located entirely within the EP7 designation. So the EP7 zone was established in order to create, uh, in order to allow for the construction of the detached garage and shed. And as mentioned, the other two buildings are legal non-conforming. The EP zone generally limits development. In this case, the lot has been previously developed for a number of years and um, additional development was permitted in 2005. The proposed development is largely limited to areas that have already been disturbed due to the construction of the existing house and does not re represent a major new impact or increased risk to the property. So in terms of um, uh, agency comments, um, the kind of key ones here were from the SVCA and um, they uh, confirmed that natural hazards associated with the Soggy River can be appropriately addressed. Uh, that there will be a negligible impact on natural heritage features and um, did confirm that their permit for these works has, has been issued and the proposed use is accept acceptable. So as they are the experts in natural hazards and heritage, um, we defer to them in these matters. Uh, and there were no public comments received in regards to this application. Now for the extension of a legal non-conforming use, there are four factors that need to be considered. Uh, the first is the size of the extension or continuation of use in relation to the existing operation. Uh, the proposed addition, I would say, represents a relatively um, minor increase of the building footprint on the subject property. Um, the first floor addition will extend into part of the existing deck and the second story does not increase the footprint on the land. 
Uh, the second factor is whether the proposed extension or continuation of use is compatible with the character of the surrounding area. Uh, the primary use on the property will continue to be residential, and the surrounding uses on the site other than the Saugeen River are all residential, so there's no issue in terms of character and compatibility. Uh, the third factor is the characteristics of these existing use in terms of a number of, of factors such as size, bulk, height, setbacks, um, fumes, dust, smoke, odor, um, lighting, tr and traffic. And to the degree to which any of these issues may be increased or decreased by the extension continuation of the use. So the existing residential use does not really contribute um, to any of the issues listed above. The size and height of the proposed use are appropriate for a dwelling and will not impact any neighboring properties. And the proposal is not likely to in increase traffic to the site or contribute to any persistent issues. And then the last factor is the possibility of reducing these nuances through building setbacks, buffering, landscaping, site plan control, and other means. And as there are no new nuances being created through the extension of this use, there's no real need to mitigate in this case. Um, the SPCA's process ensures that no new hazards are being created through the construction uh, of the addition. So with that, um, this is an extension of a legal non-conforming use, and the application is consistent with the PPS, upholds the objectives of the Bruce County official plan, and represents good land use planning, in my opinion. And so I do recommend approval um, subject to the conditions on the decision sheet. Thank you, Ms. Forche. Uh, Mr. Marsland, do you wish to address the committee? Thank you, sir. Uh, is there any public comment? Mr. Minaj. We have that really nice drawing back that shows the elevations. That one there, so, thank you. So on the far right hand side, there's an overall height calculation and I can't read it. It, it sort of adds the four pieces together. Mm -hmm. It looks like it could be a three, but I'm assuming it's a three. I have it here. So the reason I ask that again is is uh, one of the one of the requirements is that that, that we speak to height. And so I did from the minutes of the last meeting ask for it, and it's 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 caught me here again thinking, you know what? Why don't we just ask for it on a regular basis and say, you, you're we're very good at saying it's going to be this much increase in in, in percentage of the of the land that is taking up. It's it's going to be these dimensions, but we may as well say, that, and, and it's going to be maximum height, the, the maximum height of this proposal is. And we just, when we get a commercial development like apartment complexes, we're dealing with height and, and we're asked for a minor adjustment. So I can't tell, and I and I, you know, I beg for forgiveness here, that, that uh, the EP, special EP7 zone, does it then, does it then say it's, it's, it's got the R1 characteristics in an EP7 zone, or does it specify all of the, all of the requirements, maximum lot coverage, maximum height, special and, and separate in an EP7 zone? Or does it defer to, does it defer to a residential uh, package and say, you're, you have a residential building here and a residential lot, it's got a special designation, an EH designation, an EP7 designation. So those are the confusing parts for me, but I'd like to know what that, if that height, for me, that height restriction, we should be trying to restrict that height in, in our process to the same height restriction as a residential lot, in my opinion. So how does that work in your land, Tessa, please? So the height is uh, just, it's about just under 24 feet, so it's standard two-story. Um, st standard two-story height. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the total height, yeah, shown here, it's going to be 24 feet. Um, 23 feet and five, yeah, five and a half inches um, to the very top of, of the peak. So that's, you know, up, up, to, up to here, right? Uh, just for future, can we have the maximum height list, listed, the expected building permit maximum height listed in, our, in these applications? And secondly, 
can can you explain? Can we have in the in the future that in an environmental hazard or an EP7 zone, we're defaulting to an R1 zone for the regulations of the, of the residents, or you're defining it all separately inside that EP7? So everybody that's in an EP7 can only have a home that is this big, this size, this structure, or it's defaulted to an R1 or an R2 designation. That's what I'm asking. So the just for clarification, Mr. Chair, the EP7 zone only applies to this property. It's a special a zoning specifically for this property, and all it really allows was the um, addition of the detached garage and the shed. That's all it speaks to was, was those two structures when it was when they were being constructed. Um, this is to extend the, the legal non-conforming um, dwelling on the property. So whether it's EP or EP7, it really doesn't change the analysis in, in this case because it's a legal non-conforming use that's being extended. And, and neither of those zonings speak to um, the, the dwelling in particular. Uh, if you'd like, you could add a height restriction as part of one of the conditions as the, as the variance. It hasn't been put in the decision, but it, it, it could be. Um, if, if you wanted to, but this is what's what's been proposed in terms of the, the site plan. Last kick then. I wouldn't want to, 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 to impose a height restriction. My hope is that, that you as planning authorities would say, in these pieces of property, we expect the height to be restricted to and give the reasons why. Is that fair? Thank you. Vice Deputy Mayor Huber. Um, I also was going to ask a question about height, but um, I have two other things. Just for clarification, 24 feet, um, when you convert that to metric, and I, uh, some of the applications are complete metric, some are still kind of half and half. So 24 feet is um, certainly within um, the 8-meter height restriction in the, in the special area of Southampton or the 10-meter height restriction in just regular R1. So um, I wanted to ask um, for your opinion. Um, I'm curious to know, why does the SVC issue permits in advance of, of us making a decision? It seems to be, um, you know, a little bit of pressure on us then to just conform. Like, did, now, maybe I can leave that with you as a question that you can, you can come back with us, uh, come back with an answer perhaps at the next meeting because um, it's happened a few times and it, it strikes me as just a little bit out of sync with the process. I also wouldn't mind if you. Um, thought about and, and maybe gave us a, a, a comment or two about what the town's liability is um, for um, situations when a building permit is issued in um, an area, um, the floodplain or has this environmental uh, rating. Um, I think, you know, we do all of the, the due diligence and so does the property owner with engineering and all that kind of stuff. But I would just be curious to, because I've never asked that question before in all the time I've been here. Um, I would just be curious to know, you know what, what liability is there for us. This application in particular makes a great deal of sense, especially since you said 24 feet, because I looked at the picture and thought, wow, that's high. But 24 feet um, brings it back down, and um, you know, certainly it's a, um, an interesting little property that lots of people see. So I applaud the Marslins for uh, making it look nice and every now and again adding to it so that it gives us something else to look at as we drive across the bridge. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? I have a motion moved by Vice Deputy Mayor Huber and seconded by Mr. Gibbons, dated today, August the 20th, 2018, that minor variance application A-39-18.48 be approved, subject to the conditions on the decision sheet. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Next item is item number 5.4. This is a minor variance application A-42-18.44. This is Red Hawk Construction Company, limited with municipal address of 2089 Bruce Road 17, Kingsbury. Okay, thank you. So um, this variance is for, um, has to do with height restrictions uh, within certain zones. Um, 
on a draft draft approved plan of subdivision as part of the West Link subdivision, and it pertains to um, uh, Box 66, 68, 69, and 70. So the applicant is proposing to build four four-story multi-use residential apartment buildings on the subject land. Uh, each building would be constructed within separate blocks, um, the blocks specifically that I mentioned. The draft plan conditions uh, established the maximum density for each block, so no change is being sought in terms of the maximum density of each block or the total number of units on each block. It's uh, strictly for height, um, to build higher, to give more um, space on the ground for, for flexibility in design. So this is um, some site context in terms of uh, the zoning, and it's quite a mix of, uh, of uses. Um, so this is a lifestyle commercial. Within that, um, there's uh, requirements for ground floor commercial with above ground uh, residential units. Um, so that would be one building that would be subject to the height restriction. And then there's two buildings within each block, um, the R415 um, zone, and again with this one. And I believe further on in the slide uh, presentation, there's a little more detail in terms of the site plan. Um, if not there, then uh, you can to your report. So this is what was approved in terms of the draft plan of subdivision. The applicant has um, indicated which blocks are um, being applied for in terms of the, the uh, variance um, by the red hashing. Um, <clears throat> so the purpose of the application is to seek relief from the maximum height restrictions in the residential fourth density special zone as well as the lifestyle commercial special uh, one zone. The maximum height in the R415 zone is 12 meters and the applicant is seeking 15 meters, a difference of three meters. So um, essentially that that's three stories to four stories. And in terms of the lifestyle uh, commercial, uh, the maximum height is nine meters and the applicant again is requesting 15 meters. The difference is six meters. And here's a little more site context in terms of where the actual buildings are being proposed. Uh, the applicants in the preliminary design phases, and I believe has a better sense of um, what's going in these two blocks, um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 to 55 units per building. Um, so 50 to 55 here and 50 to 55 here. Uh, this is the lifestyle commercial block with the ground floor commercial, above ground residential, and this is another uh, multi-unit residential building here being requested uh, to, to be built to four stories. Um, just go back, that next one, that next site plan um, pertains to these two blocks, 66 and 68. So this is um, the site plan for blocks 66 and 68, mid-rise development. And this is a, uh, a rendering of, of what the buildings would look like. So in terms of um, the, the local official plan, uh, the subject lands are designated high density residential, um, block 66 and 60. Eight, that is, and commercial in block 70, and medium, de um, medium density in block 69. Um, the lands were subject to an official plan amendment in 2015, as well as a major revision to the draft plan, re resulting in updated draft plan conditions. The updated draft, draft plan conditions establish maximum densities for each block within the specific, uh, within the draft plan. So the, the proposed variance does not impact the number of units, again, um, within each of the blocks. It's uh, strictly to, to allow more flexibility on the ground by building up. So there's more, uh, there's more space on the ground for, for site design. Um, 
the vision of the subject lands established through the official plan um, amendment process is for a mixed use development containing a mix of densities and housing types while integrating commercial uses as well. Uh, the proposed variance is in keeping with the, the town's official plan, in my opinion. In terms of the uh, the zoning, the subject lands are zoned residential fourth density. Um, again, this is uh, block 66, 68, and 69, as well as lifestyle commercial. Um, and to recap the provisions of those uh, special uh, zoning provisions allow within the uh, residential blocks 12 meters um, for building height and uh, nine meters in the lifestyle commercial zone. Um, of note, I guess, the special provision within um, the, the R4 zone, the, so that's R415 relates to exterior side yard setbacks and maximum lot coverage, both of which are not uh, impacted through this proposed variance. Um, in terms of the Lifestyle commercial zone, the special provision relates to requirements for the subdivision of, uh, for, for a subdivision agreement and site plan control, as well as uh, retail floor area provisions, um, in addition to establishing a ratio of no less than 25% of accessory dwelling units to retail units. And again, the maximum height is nine meters in the lifestyle commercial zone. Um, so in terms of agency comments, there was no, no objections indicated by the town. Uh, the Saugeen Valley Conservation Authority um, provided their final clearance for this subdivision um, in June 2017, and our, um, the proposed minor variance is acceptable to the SVCA. Um, no written comments were received. Um, prior to the submittal of this report. Uh, however, I did, I did get a phone call in, from a, a neighboring property uh, indicating they may be at the meeting tonight. So that person may be here to provide comments. They were not written though um, prior to the meeting. So in terms of the, so again, no comments prior to the meeting. In terms of the uh, four tests, um, we've covered the official plan and zoning. Uh, in terms of test three, is the proposed variance desirable for the appropriate development for the appropriate development or use of the land, building, or structure? In my opinion, the proposed variance is appropriate for the lands. The subject lands have already undergone a comprehensive planning process through the official plan amendment, zoning bylaw amendment, and uh, sub plan of subdivision approvals process, most recently in 2015. Uh, the proposed variance maintains the intent of this planning exercise to establish the lands as high density and medium density residential as well as lifestyle commercial. It also maintains the function, as, function of the lands established through uh, the site plan control process. Uh, the variance um, represents an appropriate form of development for the use of the land. In terms of test four, is the proposed variance minor? Uh, the location of the proposed, um, uh, sorry, let me back up here. Um, it's not expected that the uh, permitted uh, variance, um, by permitting the variance, um, there'll be any impact uh, to the character of the area or impact to the ability of the ability of adjacent uh, property owners to use their properties uh, for permitted uses. Uh, the locations of the buildings relative to the adjacent land uses is buffered by um, a row of mature maple trees on County Road 17. Um, and as such, uh, proposed um, increase in height is not uh, anticipated to adversely impact surrounding land uses. Um, there is no increase in the proposed density of the units being proposed. Uh, again, the variance will permit more flexibility in terms of site plan design. So in my opinion, the, the variance is minor. So just to recap, the variance is being requested to facilitate um, the development of four four-story um, apartment buildings, um, whereas currently um, only uh, two-story and three-story apartment buildings are permitted. There's no change in density, um, and the application allows more green space and increased flexibility in site place design. Uh, site design. Um, the application is com uh, consistent with the PPS, upholds the objectives of the county official plan, and in my opinion represents good land use planning.
I believe the application satisfies the four tests. As such, the recommendation is for approval. Thank you. Does the applicant wish to speak? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, I don't have a lot to add to that comprehensive review by Mr. Kingsbury, but uh, I would just uh, like to say that, as he pointed out, as we get more into the process and this project moves forward, um, first of all, um, although four buildings are proposed ultimately, they are proposed over a period of years and all, all proposed concurrently. So one, one at a time will come forward. And as we're moving forward on the first one um, and we start looking at the design, uh, it appears to us that a, a more proportional or better uh, looking, more attractive building uh, is, is achieved through a smaller footprint and an, an additional story. And we could probably put four stories into a 12 meter height limit, but you'd have a flat roof. You wouldn't be able to have a peaked roof that would fit with the balance of the, the proposed community. So we felt that uh, it was worthwhile having that extra three meters of flexibility to, uh, to allow us through the architectural process to, uh, to come up with the most attractive building possible. As I said, it also uh, shrinks the footprint, which permits uh, additional amenity space around the buildings and the parking lots, additional planting and landscape area as well. So, um, and just uh, in regard to a comment that came up in previous application regarding affordability, um, we are working with a consultant who uh, is searching and researching for us the uh, funding programs available right now to, to look into that. So that's certainly on the radar uh, with this project. So um, with that, I'm pleased to answer any, any questions. Thank you. Is there any questions? Yes. Uh, thank you. Mr. Chair, just a point of clarification then. I think I heard you right. So we're going to push in and push up the proposal, which is going to uh, maintain the, the total, the existing numbers that were originally in the site plan consideration. Number of units will stay the same. Number of parking spots will stay the same. The green space will increase because you're going up. Is that correct? Through you, Mr. Chair, that's correct. Thank you. We'll go. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you to uh, Daniel, if I could. Um, what's the difference between the, the LC1 and the uh, R4 15? Why the height difference? I'm not, uh, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, through, through the planning exercise that uh, happened in 2015, um, that uh, those provisions, I guess, were, were looked at. And... Um, I'm not exactly sure the intent of the uh, sort of the restriction in the LC uh, zone. Perhaps Roger might have more uh, insight into that um, aspect. Um, through you, Mr. Chair. I, I wish I, I did. Um, I, I think if I was paying more attention back then, I would have asked for three stories uh, in, in addition on that, uh, that portion of the site as well. So uh, I don't have a, a solid answer for you on that. I'm, I apologize. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and um, again, um, amazing development out there, and uh, it's great, great to have you investing in Saugeen it, Shores. It, uh, you probably can't wait for the bridge to get opened up. What bridge? Yeah. <laughs> You're probably tired of talking about that, right? <laughs> Any new date on that, middle of September? Do we know yet? Uh, I had heard this morning, first week of yeah. September. Yeah. Um, just wondering, the uh, your first phase, uh, are you looking at the lifestyle portion, commercial? Will you be looking at the higher density residential? What, wh where do you think your your starting point might be? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. The, f the first building would probably be uh, within the, uh, directly sort of north of the clubhouse, uh, in those two blocks that were shown in, in some detail in a site plan. Um, one of those blocks is now part of the registered plan. The plan's the registered, not just draft approved anymore. So that's the first one, timing-wise, that would be available to uh, to proceed. Can you explain for me just what when you talk about lifestyle versus your high-density residential, you say lifestyle. Can you what, what 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 are you referring to when you say lifestyle? Well, I think that was that was a sort of a name in the official plan or in the zoning, um, which brought with it. Uh, 
the amenities that go with that community, the, the golf membership, the gym, or you know, pool, you're not, that sort of thing. Not so much talking about one of these units. You're talking about the whole lifestyle community, all Correct. the housing Correct. and apartments, commercial, all put together. Right. Again, we having uh, Red Hawk and the construction and solving chores for sure. Vice Deputy Mayor Huber. Thank you. This is, there's been two questions about the, the titles of things. Um, really fun to go back and look at the original planning application because we created those names because it was a totally different concept that, that they were after. It was a wonderful package. Um, and the RR zone is kind of distinct too. It's re recreational, residential. So I believe, and I hope it's still true, the intention is um, some permanent trailer sites and then some transit um, trailer sites, but not, not necessarily like what we think in a trailer camp. Is that still the idea with the RR? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, that's sort of the phase four, we'll call it, the last phase, but that hasn't changed. That is still, uh, I think, uh, with the consultant we used at the time, came up with the name uh, Outdoor Hospitality Park, and it was a combination of... of trailer sites, cabins, cottages, and, and sort of, again, involved with the clubhouse and the golf and, and the whole sort of amenity kind of community uh, of, of, uh, of different uses. So that's still on the books. I think the word campus was in there too, but it's a, it's a really interesting planning package because it was a total new, totally new concept for, for us to consider. One follow-up to uh, everybody's deputy mayor's touched on it and... Uh, um, I go on a bit of a bit of a rant here, a bit of a run on on uh, geared income housing and, and affordable housing, and talking about the you know the, the trailer units uh, that that last phase. We and, and I'm sure uh, there are going to be some people campaigning on this, no doubt, over the next little while. But affordable housing, geared income housing, um, lifestyle trailer units that that is a that is a route. I hope that. One of our developers at some point in time is going to pick up on and say there's a real need here. I mean, we talk about labor in our community um, and, and, and potential for labor shortage. We we there is a there is a void there with geared income and, and, and affordable housing. And if you just tuck that away in your back pocket, I'm sure you people have thought about it. But and I know that's that's that that's a different kind of investment. And uh, but um, I think we're going to be hearing a lot about that in the next year. Thank you. Hello, I'm Barbara Martin. I live northeast of Red Hawk. Um, my first comment is about the application. I received notice of the application on August 9th. Today's meeting is the 20th, and upon talking to the planner, uh, he said they have 30 days um, what, that it has to be heard in once they receive the application. So I'm curious in the 30 days why it took me 19 days to get the application. So I have 11 days left to comment, four of which were weekends or days. I just think that especially at this time of year, it would be much more timely to receive notification more, well, sooner, not after over half the time is gone. I, I find that, that um, oh, kind of limits people's ability to comment. And at this time of year, especially when so many people are busy, away, whatever, I think it's important that people are informed in a much more timely fashion. Um, secondly, I do know that everybody seems to be, uh, doesn't seem to be as worried about height. I am a little worried about height. I think that increase of six meters is a lot. Um, I know that they're talking about that area, which is now an urban area, but there are quite a few of us who are still in the rural area, which I know is Bruce County plan, as opposed to the Sogging Shores official plan. However, I think we should have a bit of consideration too for height. When you drive down that side road, those four buildings at that height are really going to stick out. I think that some of the consideration should also be given to the surrounding properties that are out in the Bruce County plan as, um, you know, conforming with, because out there you have maybe barns, 
but a lot of one, single and two-story houses, these buildings are really going to stick out. I mean, there are trees there along 17, but there are no trees along the side road. And these buildings will probably top those trees. Some of those trees are getting, are just growing. They're going to be quite a while before they get to much of a height. Uh, I can't remember exactly which year they were put in, but I think it was the early 90s. So they're still not full-size trees. The other thing I, I have a question about is, um, in your question four, is the variance minor in nature and the impact on surrounding property owners? Well, I think that extra six feet could have a lot of impact. I know on the maps they show fields, but there are houses just off those photographs that haven't been included. And I mean, I know that the Sogging Shores official draft plan 4.2 says 2.91, or 2 the proposed development and redevelopment of all land in the town must be generally compatible with the adjacent land uses. And I have to say, farms are adjacent land uses. And 3.2.5, to ensure that new development and redevelopment are compatible with existing or planned neighborhood, neighboring land uses. You've got a lot of farms there. I'd like to be considered sometimes too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? Vice Deputy Mayor Huber. Um, thank you very much, uh, Barbara, for your comments. And, and we regularly um, ask questions about timing of, of uh, notification. So those comments are well placed with those of us that sit around the table. Um, I'm curious to know, perhaps, um, I know you're not uh, who I thought you were, but I, perhaps you can make a comment about the distance from the side road to um, the, because those kinds of measurements aren't marked on the map. Um, three of these um, four-story high units are, are uh, fairly close to uh, County Road 17. Um, but um, the one that's uh, a little bit sort of distinct, how far back is that from the road? Because it looks, uh, you know, there's, there's uh, two, four, six, eight, twelve. There's probably about um, 16 housing units in between the side road and where this would be. So uh, just approximately what distance is that back from the side road? Three, Mr. Chair, I think it's somewhere close to 200 meters from the side road, 1314. Oh, that's the southerly sort of north-south facing building, the one you're mentioning? Yeah. yeah. I think it's close to 200 meters at that point. It might be 180, 170, but it's, it's a fair distance. Thank you. There will be, excuse me, there will be planting along the side road. I, I, I know as well, ultimately, um, when that part of the site moves forward, uh, the planting throughout the site, around the building itself and uh, throughout the townhouse uh, site proposed directly to the east between the, the proposed apartment building and the, uh, and the side road. So. Like I said, that, that extra height is, is really to allow us to put a roof on the building that's attractive rather than a flat roof. So. Anyone else? Thank you very much, sir. I have a motion moved by Vice Deputy Mayor Huber and seconded by Mr. Gibbons, dated today, August the 20th, uh, 2018, that minor variance application A-42-18.44 be approved, subject to the conditions on the decision sheet. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this is a minor variance application for the lands um, kind of shown in blue here. Um, so this is directly south of the existing Square Deal Neal store, which is at 240 here, so just, just across the street. 
So just a little bit of site context. Um, so again, uh, our mapping here was a little bit off. These two lots have also been confirmed to merge. So even though there's a lot line here, I can confirm that, that uh, these lots have merged and it is one property. Uh, so we've got the aerial view there. There's an existing building on the site and then just the context. Um, so it is highway commercial and there's surrounding residential uses as well. It is um, fully service on municipal services and access is off of uh, Peel Street. So in terms of the pr uh, purpose of the application is to facilitate, facilitate the construction of a new commercial building. Uh, the existing building on the property is proposed to be demolished. Um, so this is in the highway commercial zone and it requires an interior side yard setback of 4.5 meters. So this is would be the interior side yard here. Uh, and uh, an exterior side uh, exterior side yard setback of 10 meters. So that would be the exterior side yard here along Peel. Uh, the proposed setbacks inst um, are instead three meters and five meters, and that's from kind of the point corner of the building to the lot line in both cases. So um, you can see on balance the side yard is retained, but just due to the configuration of the building on the site, uh, the corners do kind of poke out into the side yards um, in this case. So in terms of uh, the policies, uh, there's um, no real issues in terms of the PPS in, in this case. Um, uh, yeah, so it was reviewed and there's no, no major issues um, or provincial interests at play here. In terms of the local official plan, it is designated highway commercial. The purpose of this designation is to provide lands for commercial operations which are not suitable to locate within the existing structures in the core but support local needs. Uh, the predominant uses shall be those not compatible with the nature of the core and require a high degree of access uh, and visibility to vehicular traffic. So the proposed use is kind of an, uh, an extension to the existing uh, Square of Deal Needles operation um, and it will support the existing retail operation across the street. Uh, this is a business that sells large appliances and they require a large amount of space for both retail and warehousing so it's appropriate for this type of use to be located in the highway commercial designation. In terms of the zoning bylaw again it's designated highway commercial as well. Uh, uh, this type of store is, is permitted uh, in the zone and aside from the side yard setbacks, the proposal, the proposed commercial building meets or exceeds all of their zoning provisions uh, and just so generally the proposal meets the intent of the zoning bylaw. Uh, in terms of uh, interdepartmental and agency circulation, uh, the town staff note that they have no objections, uh, but the sub property will be um, subject to site plan control. Uh, in terms of uh, the conservation authority, they did not recommend the preparation of an EIS and found the variance to be acceptable. And none of the other circulated agencies raised um, any, any issues. There were no public comments received in regards to this application. Uh, and so in terms of the four tests, does the variance maintain the intent and purpose of the official plan? It is a, a permitted use on this property and, and is the type of use that's proposed to be located here. So I believe that it does. Same thing with the zoning bylaw. It meets the intent and purpose. Uh, in terms of is the variance desirable and appropriate? I would say that it is. Uh, the two reduced side yard setbacks represent minor encroachments into their respective side yards as uh, on balance the required side yard setback is maintained. The proposed footprint ensures that the front and rear yard setbacks are maintained which I believe are the two more kind of vital setbacks in this instance. The required front yard setback ensures that the building is an appropriate distance from the highway and the required rear yard setback maintains an appropriate distance from the abutting residential lot. The variance represents an appropriate form of development for the use of the land. And in terms of is the proposed variance minor, I believe that it is. I don't believe these two small encroachments into the side yard should have any impact on municipal functions, surrounding property owners, or the environment. So I would consider it minor. So with that, uh, just to review, this will allow for the construction of a new commercial building. It is consistent with the PPS. Uh, the uh, county and Sonny Shores official plan and represents good land use planning in my opinion and so I do recommend approval. Thank you. Mrs. Sinclair, do you wish to address? Thank you. Vice Deputy Mayor Huber. I think we're under a time limit here but this is great. Um, fabulous um, 
uh, extension of, of your existing shop and a, a hopefully a, a, just a, a great improvement to the to lot with uh, more space and um, some interesting attributes. I did want to comment that um, uh, I appreciate, and I, I don't think um, this is subject to site plan control. Okay, I don't, so I don't know if this is a completed document yet, but it's nice to see um, all of the trees sort of showing on the picture on the end that abuts the residential area because that, that makes perfect sense. Um, I particularly appreciate also seeing um, some trees along, along the highway. I just want to make sure, though, th um, through you, Mr. Chair, to Jay, um, what we're showing here, there's still um, room beyond this property line um, out towards the highway for the potential for someday uh, for a sidewalk to get in there, right? Yes, okay. Okay. Um, I also wanted to just um, encourage you to um, think about that little triangle at the corner where it's showing a few clusters of trees in there too. As we all know, that's a popular little stopping ground for people to get across the highway. So whatever we can do to make it um, be um, an attractive but also a very safe sort of landing pad for pedestrians to take a moment if they need to wait to get across, that would be good. I also hope that, um, you know, as we do something like this, that um, there's a little bit of attention paid to the, the design guidelines, which set out some ideas for the parkway um, coming into Southampton. Because this property, boy, if we get this one right and you do a nice job, it'll, it'll set a tone that I think will be picked up along the way. So I think this is a, a great picture to see. I didn't see any indication of any signage in here. Do you, are you in, through you, are you intending to put a, another sign on the highway here? Is that an I well, well, if you do ever dis if you do ever discuss it, we have a sign bylaw, so just yes, keep that in mind. Um, and I, I also just wanted to um, um, again comment that that this is really nice to see, and also to just uh, make a comment to you that um, when people ask about how to where to get things serviced, even if they didn't buy it from you, they know that they'll get a little bit of help if they go in there. So you're a wonderful business to have in Sogging Shores. Thank you, uh, Councillor Myatt. Mr. Gibbons, I'm sorry, good to see you there. Yeah, actually, there was a previous entrance off of 21, but it's closed uh, currently, and there's no access um, off of the highway. It'll all be off of Peel. I guess it's a good night to congratulate investors and and, uh, and, and uh, yeah, and uh, it is, it's another another wonderful investment in Sogging Shores and. And kudos to uh, you people for what you're about to do. Must be ex very exciting. And I just wanted to pass on to uh, one of the things I'd written down was about landscape under site plan control. And I, I just hope that um, as much attention can be placed upon landscape as as possible on that strip. I see a little corner there. So I think anything we do to add landscape along our corridor is a is a good thing to do. And I th I'm sure you'll be looking at that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Legault. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a couple of questions about the, the design. So the Peel Street will be the storefront? No, it'll be along Highway 21. And the... And... Oh, I, I'm, I'm sure it will look good. The, the entrance and the main entrance is on the north side of the building where the parking is, I'm, I'm assuming? Or is it right off Peel? So you, you'll have to walk around the front to get, okay, got it. And then the, the receiving area, I'm assuming, is... Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So will they be crossing the path of the pedestrians or the, the, the customers coming in at all in the parking lot? Okay. Thank you and congratulations and thanks for your uh, coming to Sloggy and Shores. Anything further? I have a motion uh, here moved by Vice Deputy Mayor Huber and seconded by Mr. Gibbons, dated today, August the 20th, 2018, that minor variance application A 41 18 decimal 48 be approved subject to the conditions on the decision sheet. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Our next meeting date will be at the call of the chair, and I have a motion moved by Vice Deputy Mayor Huber and seconded by uh, Mr. Legault, dated today, August the 20th, 2018, that we do now adjourn to meet again at the call of the Secretary-Treasurer. All in favor? Thank you, everybody.